The clandestine world of ninjas, their deadly artistry and lethal weapons, continues to fascinate and intrigue. Unfurling this shadowy veil, we embark on an exploration of 15 lesser-known yet deadly weapons from their arsenal. A journey through ingenious devices and lethal instruments, designed for sabotage, espionage, and elimination. Number 1. Shuriken, Starblades. In the world of ninjas, the shuriken holds a prominent place. Traditionally referred to as hidden hand blades, shuriken come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Contrary to popular belief, these were not primarily designed to kill, but to distract and disorient enemies. At its simplest, a shuriken is a flat, bladed projectile, often mistakenly perceived as always being star-shaped. Indeed, the Hira shuriken, or the throwing star, is probably the most recognized form. These throwing stars have a varying number of points, typically between 3 and 8, and their edges are sharpened to inflict damage. However, another less known variant is the bow shuriken. These are straight, thin, cylindrical spikes, which could be thrown in a number of ways, including overhead, underarm, sideways, or even simply dropped. Their goal, to create a surprise factor, a crucial element in ninja strategies. The shuriken was an easily concealed and silent weapon, making it a perfect fit for a ninja's stealth missions. Despite their compact size, they required significant skill to master. The art of using these weapons, known as shuriken jutsu, was taught as part of a comprehensive martial system, often complementing other ninja skills like swordsmanship, archery, and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Although shuriken was not typically poisoned, there are historical accounts of ninjas using various substances to infect wounds caused by these blades. These ranged from bacteria-laden dirt to toxic plants and animal venoms. However, the primary function of shuriken remained to confuse and distract, allowing the ninja either to deliver the final blow or to escape. The versatility of shuriken extended beyond just throwing. They could also be used in close combat, either as a stabbing weapon or to block enemy attacks. In some cases, they were even used as a tool for scaling walls, with the ninja embedding them into the wall as makeshift hand or footholds. All these characteristics make the shuriken one of the most fascinating weapons in the ninja's repertoire. These blades are a testament to the innovative and strategic minds of ninjas, who could turn a small piece of metal into a versatile and effective weapon perfect for their shadowy world of stealth and subterfuge. Number 2. Tetsubishi, Caltrops. The Tetsubishi, or Caltrops as they are commonly known, embody the ninja's guile and resourcefulness. These small devices, looking deceptively simple, were used as an early form of area denial weapons to obstruct enemy movements. Tetsubishi typically had four sharp spikes arranged in a tetrahedral structure, which meant that no matter how they landed, one spike always pointed upwards. These spikes could easily pierce through the soles of shoes, effectively injuring and slowing down pursuers. This made Tetsubishi an excellent weapon for escaping or creating chaos in enemy ranks. Their design was influenced by the natural world. Some historical documents suggest that ninjas crafted tetsubishi inspired by the water caltrop plant's fruit, which has a similar structure. A case of clever biomimicry, tetsubishi showcases the ninja's adaptability and ingenuity. Tetsubishi were usually made from iron, but they could also be fashioned from wood or bamboo in a pinch. Sometimes they were smeared with poison to inflict additional damage. Once deployed, these tools could control a battlefield by limiting the mobility of the enemy, even serving to dissuade horse charges. The simplicity, effectiveness, and versatility of Tetsubishi reflect the practical and resourceful spirit of the ninja. They prove that even the simplest tools can be transformed into lethal weapons in skilled hands. Number 3. Kaginawa Hook Rope The Kaginawa, a grappling hook attached to a rope, was another essential tool in the ninja's arsenal. This versatile instrument served both as a weapon and as a device to overcome physical barriers. In essence, the Kaginawa was a metal hook, often with multiple prongs tied to a long rope. The strength and design of the hook varied. Some were crafted to hold the weight of a fully grown adult, enabling ninjas to climb walls, trees, or to cross over moats and trenches. 
The Kaginawa's practical application extended beyond merely scaling obstacles. It could be swung overhead and used as a weapon, the hook capable of inflicting serious damage if it struck an enemy. Additionally, the rope could entangle an enemy's weapon, providing a tactical advantage in combat. A less known application was its use in water-based activities. Ninjas were known for their swimming skills, and Kaginawa could be used to anchor them in strong currents or to secure a boat. The Kaginawa exemplifies the multifaceted nature of ninja weapons. Not only was it an offensive tool, but it also significantly expanded a ninja's mobility and flexibility during their stealth operations. Its versatility reflects the philosophy of the ninja, where each tool held numerous applications, limited only by the user's imagination. Number 4. Tekokagi Hand Claws The Tekokagi, or hand claws, personify the animalistic and aggressive aspects of a ninja's arsenal. These were weapons designed to enhance the natural weapons we're born with, our hands. At first glance, Tekokagi may seem like an extension of the human hand, it typically consisted of a metal band designed to fit around the hand, adorned with four or five curved or straight spikes mimicking claws. This design allowed for a range of deadly attacks, transforming a ninja's hand into a lethal weapon. Primarily used in close quarters combat, the Tekokagi could be employed for slashing or stabbing motions, the sharp claws capable of rending flesh and tearing through armor. But the usage of these claws wasn't restricted to offensive moves. In defensive situations, Tekokagi could be used to parry or catch an enemy's blade, creating an opportunity for a counterattack. Although not their primary function, Tekokagi could also assist in climbing or crawling in certain situations, providing extra grip and making them a useful tool in a ninja's stealth missions. A less known fact is that they could be used for intimidation. The sight of a hand transformed into a claw could be enough to unnerve an opponent, giving the ninja a psychological edge. The Tekokagi exemplify the ruthless efficiency of ninja weaponry. They show how a simple concept, augmenting the natural human hand, can create a tool of both offensive and defensive power, perfectly suited to the unpredictable and high-stakes world of the ninja. Number 5. Kusarigama, Chain Sickle The Kusarigama, a combination of a sickle, kama, and a weighted chain, kusari, is one of the most iconic ninja weapons. The deadly synergy of these two contrasting elements, one for close combat, the other for long range, gave the ninja a significant tactical advantage. One end of the Kusarigama featured a sharp, curved sickle, ideal for slicing and stabbing at close range. The other end had a heavy iron weight attached to a chain, which could be swung overhead and launched at an enemy from a distance. The weighted chain could be used to strike entangle an opponent's weapon or limbs, or simply as a distraction. In skilled hands, the Kusarigama was a weapon of great versatility and unpredictability. A ninja could switch between close combat with the sickle and ranged attacks with the chain, depending on the situation. This made it incredibly challenging for an enemy to predict and counter the ninja's attacks. It's worth noting that the Kusarigama required significant training to master. The risk of self-injury was high due to the chain's unpredictable nature. But in the hands of a skilled ninja, this weapon could take on multiple enemies, keeping them at a distance with the chain while ready to engage in close combat with the sickle. The Kusarigama represents the tactical genius and adaptability of the ninja. It's a weapon that demands high skill and provides high reward, embodying the essence of the ninja's cunning and deadly elegance. Number 6. Shikoro – Neckblades among the more obscure tools of the ninja is the shikoro, a weapon designed for stealthy assassinations. These were small blades, concealed and mounted onto the backside of a leather or metal band worn around the neck. The concept behind the shikoro was to have a hidden weapon, ready to be used in close quarters when detected or cornered by an enemy. The blade was usually razor sharp, designed to slash or pierce vulnerable areas like the neck, face, or belly. Shikoro blades were compact, easy to hide, and typically unnoticeable unless looked for specifically. This made them perfect for missions that required the ninja to blend in without carrying conspicuous weapons. Using a shikoro demanded precision and an excellent understanding of the human anatomy, as it was intended to deliver lethal blows in critical areas. Some accounts suggest that these blades were occasionally poisoned for ensured lethality. 
The Shikoro stands as a testament to the ninja's emphasis on concealment, surprise, and efficiency. It is a symbol of the dangerous world these shadow warriors operated in, where a concealed blade could mean the difference between life and death. Number 7. Kyoketsu Shog, Hook Knife and Rope The Kyoketsu Shoge, translating to to run about in the fields and mountains, was a multi-purpose tool utilized by the ninja. This tool comprised a double-edged blade with a curved hook connected to a long rope with a ring or weight at the end. The Kyoketsu Shoge was a weapon of versatility. The hooked blade could be used for slashing and stabbing in close quarters. Its unique shape allowed it to catch and disarm an enemy's weapon, similar to a kaginawa. The attached rope, typically around 18 feet long, had a multitude of uses. It could be employed to entangle an opponent or their weapon, for climbing, or even as a tripwire for traps. The weighted end could be thrown to strike an enemy from a distance or as a distraction. Training to use the Kaioketsu Shoge was rigorous, due to the risk of self-injury and the weapon's multi-purpose nature. Yet its versatility made it an excellent tool for the ninja, encapsulating their approach of adaptability and resourcefulness. The Kyoketsu Shoga is a vivid example of the ninja's tactical ingenuity, their ability to utilize a single tool for a multitude of functions. Number 8. Fukiya, Blowgun The Fukiya, or Blowgun, demonstrates the ninja's mastery of subtlety and precision. The weapon was a simple, narrow tube, typically made of bamboo, through which the ninja could blow small darts or pellets towards their target. While the blowgun itself was unassuming, its effectiveness was not to be underestimated. A well-placed dart could silently incapacitate a guard or distract an enemy at a critical moment. The strength of the Fukia lay in its simplicity, allowing the ninja to strike from a distance without revealing their position. The darts fired from the Fukia were often tipped with poison, increasing their lethality. Various poisons were used, ranging from those that caused immediate death to others that induced symptoms of common illnesses, thus avoiding suspicion. There are even accounts of ninjas using the Fukia to deliver darts soaked in a substance that would cause temporary blindness, adding another layer of versatility to this weapon. Despite its lethality, the Fukia also had non-combat uses. For instance, it could be used as a breathing tube while underwater, allowing the ninja to stay submerged for extended periods. Additionally, it could be used as a peephole to spy on enemies from a safe distance. The Fukia, in its elegant simplicity and deadly potential, is a reflection of the ninja's stealthy and strategic approach to warfare. Number 9. Metsubushi, Eye Blinder Among the various weapons in a ninja's arsenal, the Metsubushi stands out not for its ability to inflict physical harm, but for its capability to disrupt and disorient. Also known as eye blinders, Metsubushi were designed to temporarily blind or distract enemies, creating an opportunity for the ninja to strike or escape. Metsubushi typically consisted of a small egg-shaped container filled with various substances, such as ground pepper, metal filings, dust, or even fine shards of glass. These containers could be thrown at enemies, releasing the blinding materials upon impact and causing temporary vision impairment and intense discomfort. While not lethal in and of themselves, Metsubushi could be pivotal in the outcome of a confrontation. By disorienting an enemy, a ninja could gain a crucial advantage, providing an opening for a lethal strike or a swift retreat. It's worth noting that Metsubushi showcased the innovative and strategic thinking of the ninja. Using relatively simple materials, they created a tool capable of significantly altering the dynamics of a fight. The Metsubushi embody the resourcefulness and cunning of the ninja, highlighting that in their world, victory didn't always come through the sharpest blade, but through the most disorienting dust. Number 10. Shinobi Zui, Hidden Sword Stick A prime example of deceptive simplicity in the ninja arsenal is the Shinobi Zu, also known as the Hidden Sword Stick. Seemingly an ordinary walking cane, this weapon concealed a deadly secret, a blade hidden within its wooden body. The Shinobi Zu was particularly favored for missions that demanded discretion and the need to blend into everyday life. To the untrained eye, it appeared as nothing more than a humble walking stick, allowing a ninja to carry a weapon without arousing suspicion. This very element of surprise was what made the Shinobi Zu such a potent weapon. When the moment was right, the ninja could swiftly draw the hidden blade, often catching their enemy off guard. 
The sword inside was usually a standard straight-edged blade, capable of inflicting significant harm. Beyond its offensive use, the Shinobi Zoo demonstrated the ninja's ingenuity in utilizing everyday objects for espionage and sabotage. It could serve as a snorkel when crossing bodies of water, or function as a breathing tube in scenarios where smoke or toxic gases were involved. In essence, the Shinobi Zoo embodied the principle of necessity is the mother of invention. The Shinobi Zoo is a testament to the cunning and innovation of the ninja, highlighting their ability to use everyday objects as tools of warfare, further blurring the lines between their ordinary and clandestine lives. Number 11. Yumi, Longbow. The Yumi, or Longbow, holds a special place in the pantheon of ninja weapons. The art of archery was a crucial part of a ninja's training, and the Yumi, with its unique asymmetrical design, was the perfect instrument to hone this skill. Standing taller than the archer, the Yumi was traditionally crafted from bamboo, wood, and leather. The distinctive shape of the Yumi, with the grip positioned one-third of the way from the bottom, allowed for greater stability and control enabling the arrow to be shot with remarkable precision. Adept in the use of the Yumi, a ninja could silently eliminate targets from a distance, often before the enemy was aware of their presence. In addition to its offensive capabilities, the Yumi was also a tool for communication. The flight pattern of the arrow or the sound it made upon impact could send coded messages between ninjas over long distances. The Yumi exemplifies the ninja's discipline, precision, and finesse. The mastery of this weapon is a testament to the years of dedicated training and practice that each ninja underwent. The Yumi stands as a symbol of the silent and deadly efficiency of the ninja, a quiet whisper of death riding on the wind. Number 12. Kama, Sickle. The Kama, known as the Sickle, is a symbol of the ninja's resourcefulness and adaptability. Originally a farming tool, the Kama was transformed into a deadly weapon in the hands of a ninja, epitomizing the saying, the best weapon is the one you have. Constructed with a sharp, curved blade fixed on a short wooden handle, the Kama bears a striking resemblance to its agricultural counterpart. But in the dynamic world of ninja warfare, this tool was not limited to reaping crops. It became an instrument of death. Primarily, the Kama was used for close-quarter combat, its sharp blade capable of delivering quick, deadly slashes. The curved nature of the blade allowed it to hook and disarm enemy weapons, providing the ninja a window of opportunity to strike. But the Kama wasn't confined to offensive maneuvers. Its wooden handle could be used defensively, blocking and parrying attacks in the absence of a proper shield. In this sense, the Kama offered a balanced combination of offense and defense, suitable for various combat scenarios. Beyond its combat applications, the Kama's agricultural roots offered another advantage. In periods of strict weapon regulation, a ninja could carry a Kama without attracting attention, as it was seen as a mere farming implement. This ability to blend into the environment was crucial for the covert operations undertaken by ninjas. The Kama could also be paired with a chain, Kusaragama, or used in pairs, Nito Kama, illustrating the ninja's penchant for versatility and adaptability. Such modifications increased the weapon's reach and introduced new combat techniques, providing the ninja with an expanded repertoire of lethal options. The Kama's transformation from a simple farming tool into a versatile weapon mirrors the journey of a ninja trainee into a master warrior. Both required a shift in perspective, an imaginative mind, and a relentless pursuit of mastery. The Kama also serves as a reminder that the world of the ninja was not separate from everyday life, but deeply intertwined with it. Their weapons were not just tools of warfare, but extensions of their life and surroundings, as deadly as they were ordinary. Number 13. Yuta, Specialized Baton The Yuta, often referred to as a specialized baton, was a remarkable weapon in the ninja's repertoire. Though not exclusive to the ninja, as it was commonly associated with the samurai class, particularly the police and peacekeepers, its use by the ninja reflects their practical approach to warfare and self-defense. At its core, the yuta was a simple, single-piece metal rod, around 45 centimeters long, typically constructed from iron or steel. The defining feature of the yuta was the prong or hook called the kagi, located about a third of the way down its length. The overall design of the yuta was robust and sturdy, built to endure rigorous use. The simplicity of the yuta belied its versatile potential in combat. 
It was primarily used for parrying and deflecting attacks, even those from a katana. The prong served a critical role in this regard, allowing a trained user to catch and control an opponent's weapon, potentially disarming them. The yuta could also be wielded offensively, used to strike or jab at an enemy. Its pointed end was particularly effective against unarmored areas of the body. When combined with the ninja's knowledge of vital points on the human body, the yute could become a lethal weapon capable of incapacitating an opponent with a single, well-placed strike. Despite its prominence as a defensive tool, the yuta found usage beyond direct combat. Its hook could be used to trap clothing or equipment, manipulate an environment, or even as a makeshift step to aid in climbing. Its robust design also meant it could serve as a tool for breaking through barriers, or as a lever. Its nondescript appearance and association with law enforcement allowed a ninja to carry a yuta without arousing suspicion, a significant advantage in covert operations. Training in the use of a yute was rigorous, requiring a firm understanding of timing, distance, and body mechanics. Mastery of the yuta was a testament to a ninja's discipline and patience. Number 14. Makibishi, Spiked Objects The makibishi, commonly known as spiked objects or caltrops, represents a unique weapon in the ninja's arsenal. While not lethal in a traditional sense, the makibishi was an effective tool for control, distraction, and disruption demonstrating the ninja's tactical brilliance. Resembling a four-pointed star, the makibishi was designed so that no matter how it landed, one of its sharp spikes always pointed upward. They were typically made of iron, though there were versions made from hardened, dried plants, known as tetsubishi and tenenbishi, respectively. In the thick of battle or during a strategic retreat, a ninja could scatter makibishi on the ground, turning the terrain into a dangerous obstacle for pursuing enemies. When stepped on, these spikes could penetrate the sole of a foot or the hoof of a horse, causing significant pain and possibly injury. Even if not stepped on directly, the presence of makibishi could slow down pursuers or alter their path, providing the ninja with valuable time to escape or prepare for the next phase of their plan. The makibishi also had psychological warfare applications. The fear of stepping on these spikes could create anxiety and hesitation among enemy ranks, disrupting their coordination and morale. In certain situations, merely the threat of makibishi could be enough to control an enemy's movements or delay their advance. The usage of makibishi showcases the ninja's understanding of warfare beyond direct combat. It underlines their tactical acumen, ability to manipulate the battlefield, and the importance they placed on psychological warfare. The makibishi was not just a weapon, but a strategic tool a physical manifestation of the ninja's cunning and adaptability. One interesting aspect of the makibishi is their seemingly passive nature. Unlike other weapons, makibishi are not wielded directly. Instead, they are left behind, a trap for the unwary. This epitomizes the indirect approach to warfare that the ninja were known for, striking at the enemy when they least expect it, from directions they do not anticipate. The makibishi also underscores the ninja's resourcefulness. Whether forged from iron or made from dried plants, these simple objects became formidable weapons in their hands, illustrating the ninja's ability to leverage their environment effectively. Number 15. Kakute, Spiked Rings The kakute were simple, yet sinister tools favored by the ninja, once again underscoring their ingenuity in transforming commonplace items into deadly weapons. These spiked rings are an exemplar of how ninjas blurred the line between the mundane and the lethal, combining subtlety with deadly force. Kakute were essentially metal rings worn on the fingers, similar to brass knuckles. They were usually unadorned, to avoid attracting attention, with one or more spikes protruding from the ring. While the design was simple, the application was multifaceted and chillingly effective. The Kakute's most basic use was as a striking weapon. A punch augmented with a kakute could cause significant harm, and the spikes could inflict deep, painful wounds. When used with the ninja's knowledge of the human body's pressure points and vulnerable spots, a kakute could become a lethal weapon. However, the kakute's real potential lay in its capacity for subterfuge. The spikes were often coated with poison, making them potent tools for assassination. A seemingly harmless touch, if delivered correctly, could be enough to dispatch a target silently and without arousing suspicion. 
Beyond their use as covert weapons, Kakute also had defensive capabilities. When worn, the rings could be used to catch or deflect an enemy's blade, providing a crucial split-second advantage in close combat. They could also be used to aid in climbing, with the spikes providing additional grip. What sets Kakute apart from other weapons in a ninja's arsenal is their hidden nature. At first glance, they seem to be innocuous jewelry. This allowed a ninja to wear a Kakute without drawing attention, even in situations where carrying other weapons would be impractical or dangerous. This element of surprise gave the ninja an upper hand in unexpected encounters or when caught off guard. The use of Kakute required great skill and precision. Each strike had to be accurately aimed and timed to be effective. Mastery of the Kakute was not just about physical prowess, but also about patience, control, and understanding of anatomy. In essence, the Kakute symbolizes the ninja's subtlety and cunning. It represents their ability to transform the ordinary into something extraordinary, their mastery of stealth and surprise, and their willingness to use every tool at their disposal in their shadowy profession.